Welcome to this class. In this opportunity, we are going to study how to recognize the point and the support in our readings. So let's get started. In its website, the Cuesta College from California states that understanding the topic, the hist, or the larger conceptual framework of a textbook chapter, an article, a paragraph, a sentence, or a passage is a sophisticated reading task. Being able to draw conclusions, evaluate, and critically interpret articles or chapters is important for overall comprehension in college reading. In order to do all that, Langan explains that you need to become a better thinker, a better writer, and a better reader. You need to understand and to practice recognizing the relationship between a point and its support. He defines the point as the main idea that a person is making, and he states that the support is the evidence that is given to back up this idea. According to him, the two most important things you must do as a speaker or writer are to make a point and to support the point. And the two most important things that you must do as a reader are to recognize the point and to recognize the support for the point. Now, let's take a look at an example of a point and its support, taken from Langan's book, 10 Steps to Building College Reading Skills. The point is, you should not put your hand into that box. Now, is there support for this point? I mean, is it clear why you should not put your hand into that box? Let's say the person then goes on to provide the following details. A flesh-eating spider as big as a small turtle just crawled in there. Detail number two. There are freshly cut leaves of poison ivy within. Detail number three. A mousetrap is loaded inside, ready to spring. As you can see, the details provide solid support for the point. They give us a basis, a basis for understanding and agreeing with the point. In light of the details, we probably won't be putting a hand anywhere near that box. Langan suggests another example of a point and its support. The point this time is, our meal in that new restaurant was unpleasant. One more time, is there support for this point? Is it clear why the, their meal was unpleasant? Now let's take a look at the following details. Number one, our meal took 45 minutes to arrive. Number two, the chicken we ordered was tough and the rice and vegetables were cold. Number three, the dessert choices were limited to stale cake and water jello. What do you think about the point now? Do we understand better now why their meal was unpleasant? After knowing these details, we probably won't be eager to eat at that restaurant. Let's continue working with the same point. Our meal in that new restaurant was unpleasant. But now take a look at the following details. Number one, we had to wait 15 minutes for the food to arrive. Number two, the chicken we ordered was too juicy and the vegetables were buttery. Number three, the dozen dessert choices did not include my favorite, carrot cake. Now, let's think. Do you consider reasonable to wait 15 minutes for a meal in a restaurant? Do you think some people might like juicy chicken and buttery vegetables? Is it acceptable to have 12 dessert options in a restaurant? According to Langen, in light of these details, we might question whether the above reasons for not liking the restaurant are good ones. Langen states that when evidence is provided, we have a chance to be both logical and critical thinkers, to evaluate for ourselves whether there is enough valid evidence in support of a point. If the reasons above were the only one given, we might decide to try the restaurant for ourselves. 
Now it is time for you to practice recognizing point and support. Remember, according to Langan, a point is a general idea, and support is the specific information that backups the point. In the following group of items taken from the book 10 Steps to Building College Reading Skills, see if you can put a P in front of the point and an S in front of the three supporting statements. Pause the video and take a couple of seconds to analyze these statements. If you chose letter B as the point, congratulations! Sentences A, C, and D state significant problems with the house. In sentence B, however, no specific problem is mentioned. It is a general statement about problems with the house. And the other sentences support that point by providing specific examples. After identifying a point and its support, you need to think critically and determine if the supporting details really back up the point. Langan calls this logical support. Here is an example taken from his book, 10 Steps to Building College Reading Skills. The point is, that woman on the news was courageous. Let's take a look at the first passage of support. She collected bags of canned and boxed food for months and then brought it to the Golden Door Soup Kitchen to be used for Thanksgiving. Thanks to her efforts, the soup kitchen was able to feed 500 more people this year than last. That number includes over 100 children. Letter B. She had a hand at all the facts and figures to back up her statements, citing three different studies by experts in the field. She handled the reporter's questions with ease and confidence. Letter C. When she saw the child being attacked, she went to his aid without a moment's hesitation. She ran up, shouting, let him go, and then kicked the ferocious pit bull as hard as she could. When the dog released the child, she grabbed the boy and pushed him to safety, even as the dog turned on her. Now you can pause the video and determine which paragraph supports the point. Langan explains that the information in letter A tells us about a kind and generous woman. Nothing she did required her to face danger, so no courage was required. The information in letter B described a woman who showed mastery of her subject and skill in an interview, but neither demands great courage. The woman described in letter C put herself in danger to help a child. Clearly, to do so, she had to be courageous. So, if you chose this item, you were correct. Finally, Langan points out that chances are that you, like most people, will benefit greatly from sharpening your thinking skills by learning to constantly ask, what is the point? And what is the support? And how logical is that support? You can become an effective one-person jury. We encourage you to continue reading and practicing recognizing the point and the support in your readings. Thank you very much for your attention.